Okay, so before starting, we need to clarify what is Jetpack Compose. So Jetpack Compose is a modern toolkit recommended to build native UIs for Android. And this simplifies and accelerates the UI building in Android because it's easy to understand and to use. So let's say we want to increase the number of the photos and we can decrease the number and so on. Okay, so let's create your first composable and a composable basically is a piece of UI or a screen and it's called like that because it's annotated with composable and make sure that you are using the set content in the main activity because inside we can create the Jetpack Compose screens and views and if we put them outside the Jetpack Compose won't work and let's say comp and let's add hello hello world let's remove the modifier we'll get to that soon and let's say text pass the hello world text and let's add it here in the set content and this is the application team so hello world and if we run the code, we should see the hello world text. So the text is displayed here, but we can also display it in the IDE by using a preview annotation. We also need to make this a composable. Let's use the hello world preview. And inside we are using the create co crash course compose team and pass the hello world function. And if you are clicking on the split this should appear here and we can also give a background so show background is true wait a second and this is it now let's talk about modifiers so a modifier can change the size the shape the color or everything about the composable and now let's see how to make this text red and add some padding to it so modifier dot background color red and now let's add some padding of 10 dp let's put this on separate lines and as you can see this looks great but the modified order is important because if we put the padding on the top the background color won't fulfill the whole space now let's talk about basic layout so let's start with the box when you're using a box you are expecting that the composables are overlapping each other so let's say we have a text of text 10 and text 33 and the last composable is the one that is on the top so the text 10 is under text 33 if we want a vertical layout we change the box with a column and they are aligned vertically but to make them horizontally we need to say row and you can also add some horizontal arrangement arrangement dot spaced by for example 10 dp we can also say spaced between evenly around and so on and you can also say vertical alignment alignment dot and you have the alignment types here but if you want to make a scrollable vertical layout you need to say lazy column and in order to display an item you need to say item and here you can put a text and let's say 33 but if you want to display a list of items so you have 100 items you are displaying them by saying that it you can run the preview of that if you are pressing run preview and if you want a horizontal scrollable layout you need to replace the column with a row with row and let's wait a second and these will be scrolling horizontally so start interactive mode and as you can see it is scrollable so in jetpack compose we have two types of grids one is the normal grid and the second one is the staggered grid and the staggered grid basically occupies the whole space if it's let empty so you will get to that soon but let's start with the lazy vertical grid and in order to customize how many lines uh, columns i'm sorry grid has we say grid cells and we have fixed 
in which we are saying how many columns. In the adaptive we are specifying a minimum size and in the fixed size it is the fixed size of the item. So we are going to use the fixed with two columns and it is the same to create items. So we are needing to say items and let's pass then items. Now we are going to make a custom height for every item by checking if it's even. So let's say is even and we are saying it percent two equals zero and that means if it's even so now let's say box modifier modifier size and let's say is even if is even we are specifying 200 dp as is 100 dp and the background color will be red. As you can see, they don't have any spacing between them. So let's fix that, fix that by saying padding 10 dp. And as you can see, the even number has a higher height. And now the grid, as I said, won't occupy the empty space. And if you are using a staggered grid, staggered grid, lazy vertical staggered grid, and we are removing the Tagger grid cells and we have fixed and as you can see it occupies the whole empty space. We can also display icons and images so let's start with icon. For example if you have an icon in the rest draw ball you can display it. I don't have one so I can use the image vector and I can use the predefined icons. So icons dot rounded and let's say call and let's put an no description and as you can see the icon is displayed here. Now let's display an image by saying painter resource or drawable coffee and the content description can also be a coffee and this appears when the image can be seen. Or this is also an instruction for those that are using the read out loud function for Android. Now for example this is in a box and that box is bigger than the image size so let's say size of 300 dp and as you can see the image is smaller we can make the image fit the whole container by saying content scale and we can say crop and also apply the modifier fill max size and we also have different content scales so i will show you all of them so we have fit that fits in the view inside the fill bounds and this makes the image stretched fill width fill height and uh, none now let's create some buttons so let's say button and this is the default button let's say hello let's zoom in a little and we can also make this outlined so by saying outline button this can be also field button, tonal button, and we can also create icon buttons by saying, let's remove this and let's say icon button. And inside let's create an icon. So image vector icons dot rounded and let's say close. And this is an icon button. We can also make this outlined icon button. There are field icon button so field icon button we also have the toggle icon button so let's remove this and let's say toggle icon field tonal icon button and the checked is false and on checked change let it empty and we can also change to true and as you can see the color changes when the button is toggled we can also have text inputs so let's remove this one and let's create a text input so let's say text field and value and on value change and let's also apply some padding to see the text field so padding 10 dp and put this inside and now and this text field can be customized. For example, you can say 
leading icon and press an icon here and let's say icon surrounded and let's add put the icon add and put the content description null you can also have a trailing icon so let's copy the icon and put trailing icon here now in order to have some input in this text field we need to create a state variable and the state variables are created with the remember keyword and this protects the state to be aware of the recomposition and the recomposition is when the screen re-renders so let's say text by remember and let's say mutable mutable state off and you also have double floats long and other things but we are using the mutable state off because we are using a simple string and now we can simply say text here and let's say new value and now let's say text equals new value and now if we are starting the interactive mode we can write some things here so okay now let's close the interactive mode and you can also change the shape of the the text field by saying rounded or you can simply press circle shape because it will round the corners and if you want to get rid of the indicator be below you need to say colors text field colors text field defaults i'm sorry colors and here we need to say indicator and let's say I'm focused indicator color dot transparent and focused indicator because if we are clicking on the text field the indicator will show up so we need to say focused indicator color and this should be transparent too you can also change the image action button by saying keyboard options keyboard options and inside you can say image action button email action button and you have different action buttons and you can set actions for these by saying keyboard actions and you need to pass keyboard actions and inside you can for example say on next on next and here we are setting up what should happen when we are tapping on on next now we can also make this outlined so outline text field and this should uh, update so let's remove this and we have the outline text field now let's build the application that i showed you in the beginning of the video so let's remove this preview because we don't need it anymore let's collapse this and let's simply say card list and let's remove the modifier and we need to count the items so let's say card count by remember mutable mutable int state of zero and now let's create the lazy column and inside we'll use the items and pass the card count and inside let's create an image painter resource r drawable pass the coffee let's say null and let's also make this of 200 dp and let's say content scale crop now in order to center the image on the row we need to say box modifier fill max width open the curly brackets put the image inside and we need to say content alignment center now let's also add some padding inside the list so let's say content padding padding values and this will add horizontal padding and vertical padding to the inner list and we can also change the vertical spacing between the items so let's say arrangement spaced by 10 dp and we need to wrap this with a column because the buttons will be at the top of the screen and the lazy column will be below them otherwise they will overlap each other so let's say button and let's create the decrease button let's put an icon before icons re-rounded and let's say close pass null here and 
let's also wrap the button with a row and put the next button because we want them to be aligned horizontally and this will be the increase and add now in order to decrease the card count amount we need to say card count minus equals one and here we need to say card count plus equals one and now let's add the card list here and hit the run button okay so let's increase the number as you can see the list is scrollable we can add items we can decrease the number of items and that's it and i hope that you find something useful from this crash course and if yes please like and subscribe for more content like this see you in the next video